Now, I know what you're thinking. You want more. You think this has got to be the most ridiculous bullshit that's out there. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Madison Cawthorn, uh, according to The Blaze, drops savage video calling on Harris to invoke the 25th Amendment. Apparently, from a carpeted bunker? <laughs> Seriously, what is this? Is, uh, is that shag? Is it just, is it... Is, uh, honestly, is he in some sort of weird prepper fallout shelter? And what, what the fuck is with this? I'm supposed to... Look, all right, first of all, I know it's a cutout. But it, this was your choice. You had a choice of what kind of desk they put in front of you. And you're, you're putting an old... What are you writing on there, Madison? All the bills you've authored? Did you type this statement up on here? I'm running out of envelopes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fuck off. But I, I'm sure it will be... It's equal amount of time... And it will be just as heartfelt. My fellow Americans. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, that that's us. My fellow Americans. This is his uh his oral office debut. Our nation is broken tonight. Americans, the bravest, most courageous among us, lay dead in the streets of Kabul today. Jesus Christ, spouses. man! Go fuck yourself. Stop. Don't steal valor from people who've passed away and, and lay dead in the streets. What do you think their fellow officers like Marines and and the naval officer that died? You think they just left them in the fucking street? What do you think? We just. Uh, guy, he's dead. I mean, just fuck it. Let's go, man. Let's pack up all the gears. Trump said every nut and every bolt. What a douchebag. Parents, family members, American patriots. They had hopes and they had dreams. They were truly the best among us. But even as the world reels and even as we grieve, the United States stands strong. Our freedom remains intact. But it remains intact because there are hundreds of thousands of service members who are just as brave and just as ready to pay the ultimate price. But though we stand strong today, it is incumbent upon we the people to be vanguards of our republic and take steps to save them. Re reading is hard, isn't it, Madison? It is. Sometimes it, sometimes you got to lean forward because it's get your is the teleprompter getting away from you? Is is it rolling too fast? Do you want to try it again? Can we everybody back to one? Yeah. Um, and we don't have a better. I mean, it looks like fucking ply. It looks like shag plywood. I don't know what the fuck he's go this is what he wants. This is what he wants. OK. And American lives in times of trial and hardship, when it seems our government has failed us, we turn to our leaders for answers. We demand accountability because that's innately American. Yeah, especially in right in the middle of something. Nothing, nothing is more American than Monday morning quarterbacking someone on Sunday morning. As Americans, we sit there and we watch war like a football game and scream at our television sets as if we know all the factors. It's adorable. Action and indecisiveness have defined our politics for far too long. The hallmark reaction of far too many leaders today has been to roll over and surrender. To roll over and surrender. So that's why we didn't get out, Maddie. Can I call you Maddie? I can call you Maddie, right? Because son seems a little rude. Um, Maddie's actually the name of our cat. Sorry, Maddie. Um, eh, what 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 would you qualify the folks that didn't get us out? Or did they roll over and surrender? Nothing. Those days are over. This is not a time for impassioned speeches followed by no action. With well, well, then I, I all right, cut everybody, cut. He's he, uh, yeah, he just said he said this is worth. I don't know, it's a waste of our time. I mean, this is an impassioned speech <laughs> that will be followed by uh, no action. So, um, I mean, he's basically just calling for the president to be impeached or resign for you know 
because it's politically expedient. So I, I don't know how impassioned he feels this. I mean, this is the sixth time he's read it and it hasn't gotten any better. I'm just saying. Well, we can't hire anybody else. He's a real representative. Yeah. All right, just roll it. We'll see. In mind, when I look to our commander in chief, I do not see someone who maliciously makes poor decisions. And yet today we witness maliciously makes poor decisions. Okay. Devastating heartbreak. American carnage is a direct result of his inept American carnage. Incompetent actions. I'm sorry. What's with all these dark winter addresses from these things? This is so pessimistic. Who does he think he is? Obama on January 20th? 20th no, sorry. Biden on 2020? Who was the... When was the dark winter speech? Was it last year? Shit. Joe Biden does not simply have a pattern of poor decision making. His mental decline is on full display. Our um, and, uh... Dude, that, that's what I would call this. I would call this mental decline on full display. More, more of a, I wouldn't take it personally, of a party in general, the Republican Party. I mean, dude, you're in front of fur plywood. Enemies know it. Americans have witnessed it. His disasters have- I had to build this shed with my bare hands. I chopped out the trees myself. I punched the wood. Withdrawal proves even further. Our executive is in crisis. President Biden's physical inability to lead is not a political talking point. It is. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're making this up because you're a dipshit. I, honest to God. I mean, it's one thing to call someone, uh, you know, accuse someone of having mental decline because uh, you don't like their decisions and how they carried out and the strength with which they carried them out when you yourself don't have the mental capacity in the first place. It's sort of like there's like a downslope of intellect when you're old and there's an upslope of intellect when you're young, you're still in the upslope, and I, I, you may have topped out. We'll find out. Demonstrable fact. Our president- Demonstrable. God damn it. Demonstrable. This is like preferable versus preferable. It drives the- sh uh, Not mentally fit to serve as president of these United States. I truly believe that he is unable to discharge the duties of the office he holds. Well, he, he is able to, and he is doing them honorably and thoughtfully. Um, so that means your beliefs are based on bullshit, and that tells us more about you than it does about him. So, fascinating. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck that wall is. I don't know. I, like, if it was one big thing, I'd almost get it, but it's like in panels. What the fuck is that? Seriously, it's, it's like... It's like something from uh, if that 70s show did a, a post-nuclear holocaust address by President Dipshit. That is why today I sent letters to each member of the president's cabinet. I sent an A to him and a B to them and a C to them. I literally sent letters. This is an H. And to the vice president. Show the letters. I'm going to show them. Invoke the 25th Amendment of the United Oh shit, I was supposed to mail these. <laughs> Why are you showing them? What does this mean? I made lots of copies. Does anybody else need one? <laughs> I made, I sent lots of letters. I sent one to my dad and one to my mom and one of the thing. I used up all the printer paper in the house. <laughs> Constitution. Um, were they in envelopes or did you just loose leaf them? Did you just kind of, I put them all in my trapper keeper and I put them in the And remove Joe Biden from his office. Uh -huh. I'm also calling on Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, to immediately call Congress back into session <laughs> to construct a disability review council and assess the president's state. I cannot sit idly by. I think his state is Delaware. Pretty, pretty sure. I mean, I, it's a debatable. I mean, obviously, he spent a lot of time in Scranton, so Pennsylvania is very close to his heart. I think it's been Delaware for a long time, so that's the president's state. It's probably where his library is going to be. They'll probably fight over it, like Lincoln, like Illinois and Kentucky. There's going to be a there's going to be a Biden library in Scranton and in Delaware. The nation that I love spiral into death and devastation because Afghanistan. Leader cannot discharge his duties. Well, look, if you if you support uh, Ghani, President Ghani, I would go to Cutter, really. <laughs> Shit. 
Look at look look at this asshole. Ser like, look, again, the issue is serious. The man is not. This is fucking dumb. And I can't get over this fucking wall. I swear to God. Is it made out of cats? Where are you? <laughs> I am here at the Chinchilla Library in my host. <laughs> there is no time to wait. The time for action is now. I take no pleasure in sending this request. The gravity of this weighs heavily on me. Well, no, me. it's a lot of work. I mean, printing those things up, putting them in envelopes, licking them. But I find no other recourse. We must not allow this... Yes, you have no other recourse because I don't think you're on any committees, right? Like, you actually don't have any direct power. <laughs> and so, I sent them letters. Unstable individual to direct our country for one second longer. The future of our republic must be carded. The lives of Americans must be carded. I don't. I think the. I, I. I. I'm pretty sure our republic is over 21. Although, even though it's over 21, I. I still don't think drinking is a good idea. <laughs> Guarded. I think must be preserved. The time to act is now. Yeah, you said that. Uh. uh yeah. T time for talk is over. That's why I'm going to continue to talk. The time for action is now, which is why I'm still talking. <laughs> this is Madison Cawthorn. Is a, a, apparently he dropped a, a, this is the blaze, savage video calling on Harris to invoke the 25th Amem uh, Amendment. Savage. It's savage, dude. Maybe that's why the wall is fur. <laughs> we couldn't get a real cave. So we thought it'd be great if we put the, the, the entire thing was like inside the loincloth. I'm here live from Ted Cruz's pubes. <laughs> What the fuck is this? Where is he? Thank you. You're God bless. You're welcome. You would make God bless these United States of America. <laughs> savage. Just a savage. It was. I feel savaged. Sauvaged even. I'm I like once. I mean, once Kamala Harris sees this, I don't know how. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. I don't know how. She's going to react. I mean, she's going to, I mean, the time for action is now. I still can't get over the fact that this jack off before they zoomed in had a little typewriter and a little like Eisenhower lamp over here in the fucking corner. The two flags are real. The House of Representatives thing seems physically real. So where the, where is he? Does anybody know what the fuck is this? I, that's going to drive me crazy. This, you know, usually you see like Congress people. And they either speak on the floor or they go out to that stupid perma podium outside the Capitol, the one that's made out of metal, and they just magnetize their little thing and they stick their thing on the front of it. Everybody, everybody in that house has a little magnet thing if they're smart. If they don't, send one of your aides to Kinko's and make one so that when you come out to make a statement, you can plank Representative Bubadu with part of your flag and the thing on it and the House of Representatives. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's metal. Probably just then go out there with a I would do it if I was a if I was newly elected to the House of Representatives, which might happen someday. I mean, it happened to Gopher. It could happen to me. So uh, I would send one of my people out or do it myself uh, on my first day. Go out there with a little uh, tape measure, measure how wide it is, measure uh, the top of it to how far I think visually would be reasonable considering my height down. Probably we're talking about uh, 12 inches this way, probably about 11 to 15 across. I don't know how big the podium is, probably about 15 inches. And then I would uh, take that. And uh, measure it. And um, I would, you know, design something, Photoshop, send it to Kinko's, get somebody to get it mounted on metal, uh, on a on a magnet plate. So come out there. And whenever I'd make a speech out there or I need to make a statement, um, I would walk out there, stick that fucker on the front of there, and it would be this nice production. You'd see something of quality when you walked out there instead of a bunch of stickers and Louis Gohmert's tooth. But no, he's in a tree trunk. He's, the, we, I don't know where the fuck he is. Apparently, he's being shipped. <laughs> Does anyone know? I find this fucking hysterical. I mean... <laughs> I did stop it before the... He stopped it before the savage part. I thought it was going to get savage at one point. I thought he was going to start punching trees. And if... Uh, for those of you that don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, if I may, let me see if I can find this. Um... Let's see, Madison, Cawthorn, 
punching trees. Here you go. Uh, let's see. Hold on. No, here we go. I gotta find it. Uh, raw in there. It, it, this video of him punching trees. Madison Cawthorn appears in resurfaced video fighting a tree. Why is Madison Cawthorn beating up this tree? It's a good question, and no one seems to have the answer. <clears throat> it looks like Madison Cawthorn didn't read the Lorax. That's funny. Please, oh, it's gone. Why did it? Oh, that's just sad. Why would you do that to the Madison Cawthorn thing? So, um... Let's see. This is what he's actually doing. Pick a rotten and ruined tree, hit something without moss or without termites. Now, this girl is more impressed. Here's a girl punching a tree. God damn. That chick, that's, that makes my hands hurt watching it. People think it's fake. Here's her doing it with gloves on in a different instance. She's way more skilled. You should see her make a canoe. Um, and you wonder how humans got along before the invention of the axe. Um, apparently, uh, they had a secret weapon. Little girls. Um, but meanwhile, Madison Cawthorn posts video of himself doing the exact same thing that little girl was doing. I like that she has her own theme music. Um, did you, if you finish the video, she gets 10 coins from the tree. A mushroom doesn't bounce out and give her special powers. I don't know. Does she get a star when she breaks through it? But hi. Um, maybe, maybe this is, this background is made with all the busted tree bark. <laughs> um, um, uh, by the way, uh, Madison Cawthorn is a dipshit. And by the way, uh, let's see. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the other, just, just in case, uh, um, you, you think I'm, uh, picking on the dude, by the way, uh, he's in a wheelchair, wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, um, has no factor in his character whatsoever. Uh, a running list of the allegations against Madison Cawthorn, um, Let's see. He took women on what he called fun rides. Common detail in the allegations of uh, in the so-called fun rides. He would take women on which he would drive them in his car to isolated locations and women say, make a move on them. Uh, uh, which sounds like something out of the 70s, but it was way worse. Um, and when it was 19, she was 17. The two agreed to go on a date. Cawthorn drove to a secluded spot in the woods, according to her. Uh, they sat around a bonfire and soon Cawthorn started talking about sex, which made uh, her uncomfortable. She says he pressured her to sit in his lap and then took things further. He tried to kiss me. I said, no, I didn't let him. I, I don't let him kiss me. Um, we talked for a little while longer, like a few minutes, and then suddenly he moved forward as if to try and kiss me so quickly that I wouldn't have a chance to say no or push him away at this point. I'm so startled I fall back. Uh, got her hair caught in Cawthorn's wheelchair, and then she was pulling on it, try it out, trying to escape. Eventually, she got away. Cawthorn drove her home. I remember going on that date with her. I did try to kiss her, uh, just very normal, just a flirtation way. As soon as I realized she'd want to, it, uh, the date was over, and continued to sit around the fire for a while. I drove her back in the car. Everything was normal. I realized she didn't pursue a relationship. Um, his MO was to take vulnerable women out on those rides with him in the car and make advances in the middle of nowhere and be their only way of getting home. It's just creepy bullshit. Um, just, just for, uh, any young men who might be watching, um, uh, going out to the woods, uh, with, with a girl is, isn't first date material. It's Ted Bundy material. Knock that shit off. You, you don't, the, n never should there be a situation where, uh, until you've actually slept with someone that you go together with them to a secluded place where you're their only way of getting home. Fucking hell. 
anyways, um, I'm, I'm so, I, I, it'll come as no surprise that um, he's got a stack of these returned unopened, the, the letter he sent. 